Surprise! Well, maybe it's not that much of a surprise. I think you probably expected me to be here, didn't you? But in today's gospel reading for um, our morning, for the fourth morning of Advent, fourth Sunday of Advent, we're going to hear about somebody who got quite a surprise. So, we're starting with surprises. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, we are going to start with our fourth Sunday of Advent and our Advent wreath. Today, I am doing um, our ask here in my home because we are not doing it in person. Um, services at St. John's and so I decided to stay home today and uh, send you a little video from here. This is my advent wreath in my home. I have three candles lit currently and our fourth candle is for today. I use electric candles to be a little safe in my home and I like the way they look. So our fourth um, Sunday of Advent is all about peace and I am going to pause the music for the moment and going to light our fourth advent candle four of them we're getting closer Lord God we light this candle and we thank you for your son our Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. We who live in discord and strife have found peace in the promise of eternal life through Jesus. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name because he lives and reigns with you in your glory in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And also, as we light the Advent wreath for the fourth Sunday in Advent, we are going to do a little reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. So Isaiah is quite an interesting book in the Bible. It's chock full of information, and it is from the Old Testament, not the New Testament. There's a lot of information in Isaiah, and it's one of the most popular books of the Bible. A lot of good stuff comes from there. So here we're talking about the coming of Jesus. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Prince of Peace, which is very fitting because the fourth Sunday of Advent, we're talking about peace is the theme for this weekend. And um, we are going to talk about another country um, in Advent, hear my jingle bell. And that is Norway. Now I'm going to turn the music back on because this is a traditional song from Norway. It's a Norwegian Advent candle lighting song. And Ten Lis means to light a candle. So I'll have that going. It's very beautiful. So the Norwegians are traditionally the Lutherans. So their traditions are very similar to ours. They start four Sundays before Christmas to start their and candles lighting. And what they do is similar to us. They light four candles on every Sunday leading up to Christmas. Very, very, pretty much the same thing we do. They light um, the candles on every Sunday, but they have this beautiful song that they sing while they light the candles. Sometimes they say a poem, sometimes they read a scripture out of the Bible, 
But this song that's on, it's their traditional candle lighting song, and it's very, very pretty. It's Ten Lees. Um, and it's customary for them, you know, like in Lent, we refrain from eating delicious food, cookies, cakes, from indulging. They kind of do that at Advent too, which is something that um, I don't do <laughs> during Advent. I don't know if you do. But they do have um, a tradition of having some gingerbread and clementines in their house all winter or all Advent during the winter, um, they really enjoy the gingerbread. And every day they have a little Advent calendar like we do, um, and they eat chocolates. The children get a little chocolate every day from their Advent calendar. And since they refrain from eating so much, the adults I should say, from eating so much sugary stuff, um, they have um, a traditional meal that's called lutfisk, and it's in its um, fish. Let me turn this off. And it's some kind of like dried or smoked fish that they that they eat, and they do lots with lights. It's it's it probably would feel like home if we went over to Norway. Um, during Advent because they light the candles and the, leading up to Jesus' birth and preparing for Jesus and the beautiful music that they have is, is really sp something special. So we are going to move a little bit here over in my living room. Here's my Christmas tree. Sorry for the jostling around there. And here we are. Well, since we are talking about Mary, we have to remember that she really, and I'm gonna turn this a little bit here, she really did receive a big surprise, didn't she? Well, maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know about her big surprise. Well, we're going to um, talk about the surprising news that, that Mary received um, from God. Okay, so she received some unexpected news and she was expected to obey. Um, maybe you guys could think of somebody in your life that you need to kind of obey. Um, that gives you directions that you need to do. Might be your parents, um, go clean your room. It might be a teacher to give you assignments. It could be a coach. Um, there's a lot of people in your life um, that you really do need to obey. So, and take directions from, okay? So let me try something with you. I'm gonna give you some directions and you need to follow them. Let's see. Okay, blink your eyes three times. Now, stand up and turn around two times. Let me set this down. You're gonna see my middle section. One, two. Um, how about if you clap your hands? Very good. So they were easy. So how about if we try to do something that might feel impossible to do? Um, can you clap your hands with one hand? It doesn't really work so well. Can you... Lick your elbow. Well, I, I, I can't even get close. Can any of you lick your elbow? That kind of seems really, really impossible to do. Now, can you 
wiggle your nose without scrunching up any other part of your face, without moving any other part of your face. That's a little difficult as well. <laughs> well, these things kind of seem a little bit impossible and it's a little hard to follow those directions to, to do sometimes. Some things might seem a little bit impossible. So um, it might be difficult to obey some things. So is it difficult ever hard to obey God? I think it is sometimes, don't you? He gives instructions too, and well, his are the most important instructions actually for us to follow. So in this gospel story that we're having today, it's about Mary. And Mary received some really, some big special instructions. And she had a special visit from an angel. That angel's name was Gabriel. And the angel was a heavenly guest in her home and he came to her. And well, he told her something. He told her that she was going to have a baby and that the baby was God's son. Well, well, she was a little confused. How's that going to work out? How is she going to give birth to God's son? How would that be? And she's not even married. She's just engaged. And well, how would God become a human? She was really, really a little scared, a little confused. We don't know how old she was. So she was probably pretty young at this point in time. And boy, it just all seemed impossible to her. Very impossible. But you know what she did? She said, okay, okay, God, I will do whatever you ask for me. I will believe and trust in God. Well, God's word came, came true and Mary became pregnant with a child and she got to be his mom. She got to be God's son's mom. She got to raise him, grow him into an adulthood, into a beautiful person and God's word came true. God became flesh in Jesus. Jesus got to walk on the earth with us and do lots of teaching. Um, Mary is the one mom who got to take care of Jesus. And God really used Mary in an amazing way. Might have seemed impossible. She was very surprised that all this was happening. Um, but all she had to do was believe. She believed and it came true. And when she believed with his plan and God's plan, he knew that God was work. She knew that God was working through her. And that can be the same with us in our lives as well. We don't have to do um, special things um, to see God's power. We just need to believe. We need to believe. And God's word will come true. Um, we recognize that Jesus is here in our lives by all the good things we do. We need to trust. We need to um, just, I don't know, invite Jesus here and welcome him and just believe and, and, and do the tasks that we need to do to, to live good lives. And well, when your mom asks you to clean your bedroom, just believing that you're gonna clean your bedroom doesn't clean your bedroom, right? You actually have to actively go clean your bedroom. Um, so there's a little bit difference in that kind of belief <laughs> um, and obeying your parents than the belief in trusting in God because that's gonna happen, but you don't have to actively do it. You need to physically clean your room, 
when you're asked or physically study or do something like that. There's a little bit different. You can have belief in yourself that you're going to do well. Um, but belief is such a big thing. So, and in our prayers is very um, helpful, a way to talk to God and show him that we believe and we trust and we obey him and we love him. So Mary, she was quite the character. She had such good belief in, in God that she just let it happen. And boy, are we happy she did. So let's, let's say this little prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to us. We believe that he is our savior and we trust you and your work in our lives. Thank you for making the impossible things very possible. Help us to believe, help us to obey, and thank you. Thank you for your love. And we love you back, God. Amen. So I wonder what the kids in our spark um, videos are talking about today with Mary. So I am going to show you the video. I think Leo might be the star of this video today. Let's see if we can turn this around. And um, I know it's just a little computer screen, but you know, we do what we can do with the technology we have. automaton has been programmed, Pat. Would you like to play dodgeball? Not right now. Right now, we need to test the theologian automaton's knowledge of the Bible. What is your query? Let's start with an easy one. Who built the ark? Processing. Noah and his family. Correct. Glory to God in the highest. Now, let's wrap it up. Who was Jesus' mother? Processing. Mary. Correct. Who was his father? Processing. God. Okay, let me rephrase. Who was Mary's husband at the time of Jesus' birth? Processing. Processing. No one. What? Uh, uh, explain yourself, Theologia Tomaton. The one you call Mary was unwed at the time of the virgin birth. She was engaged to Joseph, but they were not yet married. That's not possible. Let me see. Okay, um, decree went up from emperor. Um, the world to be registered. I am incapable of error. Quiet! Ah, he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged. Engaged? Do you know what this means? Praise and thanks. No, Pat. They did things completely out of order. The formula is, first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the baby in the baby carriage. Then comes dodgeball. What do I do with this? Should I tell anyone? Ah, I miss worship! I see now. I must bear this secret myself. I cannot tell anyone. They can never know. They were not married! Mary and Joseph were not married! Mary was the unwed mother of God's son! <gasps> Look, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Yeah, we know. We heard all about it during worship today. You did? Yeah, it was really interesting. All the social pressures Mary had to deal with. Wait, so you all know that Joseph and Mary weren't married? Of course! But it just doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Why would God do that to Mary? 
I mean, she had to tell Joseph, her future husband, that she was pregnant and it wasn't his. Why would Mary just go along with such an impossible situation? I guess she had faith. Faith in what? That God would see her through it. And God did. Oh, totally did. God made the impossible possible. But it's the principle of the thing. How could... Would you? I... Oh, I need to sit down. It's a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah, just think how Mary must have felt. Not helping, Mimi. <laughs> Yeah, just think how Mary would have felt. Well, what do you think? I think God gives us messages in all kinds of very interesting ways, don't you? Theology Amon... Theology Automonatron. I don't even know how Leo said that word. He's a very smart kid. Um, but, wow, very surprising to him. Was it surprising to you? Do you ever hear of surprising things in the Bible? Things that you think, well, that's kind of impossible. Uh, this is one of those things that is like a miracle. Um, the miracles in the Bible that you read might seem impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. So try to think of a couple things in the Bible that you might feel is a little impossible. So, yeah, sometimes the way God sends us messages are a little out there. So here we are, getting closer and closer to Christmas. We're in the fourth week of Advent. And, um, of course, our colors in our church are blue Azul in Spanish. I'm sure I'm not saying that so good, but I try. And our word for the day um, is possibility. Possibilities are endless. So the American Sign Language for the word possible or possibility, two fists, and you're gonna bop them up and down twice. Possible. Last week, it was justice. Tips of your fingers together. Going over last week's, look how many we have learned since September. We learned a lot. We are going to really have some fun with all these words in January because we're going to try to make a sentence with all of them and put them together and talk, make a sentence in sign language. But today's word is possible. Anything is possible. I'm surprised that Ginger has not come out to visit us yet. That's my dog or my cat, Rosemary. Usually they're all underfoot and they're not here this morning. But anything is possible. So with Mary, um, she said yes, she had belief, and that talk between Mary and the angel Gabriel, when Gabriel came and talked to her and told her that um, she was going to be a mom and she was going to have a baby. And he came to her. Now this is from the book of Luke. Um, and it is in the first chapter and, you know, between 20, verses 26 and 38 tells that whole story. So pull your Bibles out and look at that. But the angel Gabriel came and he said to her, Greetings, favored one. Wow, that must have made her feel really, really special. He said, The Lord is with you. How special is that? That's really, really special. And the angel Gabriel said to him, her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Well, what a special relationship there between that angel and Mary. Uh, I don't know. I might have been a little afraid, 
but she seemed to keep her calm and listen to everything. And, you know, when it came to the point where after he told her she was going to have a baby and she didn't quite know what was going to happen, well, she said yes anyway, because she had that belief. So that was pretty awesome for Mary. And she was the servant of God. She said yes. And, well, we all know the rest of the story. We have a few more days till we are coming up on Jesus' birthday, the day she gave birth to him. So because of today, we're talking about Mary and her saying yes and this beautiful belief that we have, and we have the angel Gabriel um, and some impossible things. I, I want to um, just show you an easy craft that you can do at home on these days where you might not have anything to do. And they might seem a little corny, but they're kind of fun. First of all, pipe cleaners are a great thing to just to play with. My cat actually likes them just for a toy. We have two kinds of clothespins here. We have the clip kind, and we have this kind. It's called a pin, okay? It doesn't have this. So you can use either one of these. Then you want a pipe, uh, not a pipe cleaner. Uh, my favorite, coffee, a coffee filter. Okay, so coffee filters make great wings for angels. So you can pinch the middle, and these pin kinds are really easy to work with. Man, you can just put that pipe cleaner up into the center. Look, it already looks like, like an angel without the halo. Then you can take this pipe cleaner, and you can fold it into a loop for a little halo on the top. And then look, what a special, easy angel to do. And you might have everything you need to make that right in your home. Look how easy that is. And with the clip one, same thing. No glue or anything needed, but all you have to do is put them in there and you clip it and you can do the same thing with this time. I'm going to use a silver one. We can make a round halo, put it on top of her head, and there you go. You got another angel can put little eyes on if you want googly eyes or use a marker and make yourself an angel. So for the angel Gabriel, now I want to tell you, I met and I have found a new friend and it is so nice to make new friends, isn't it? And sometimes it might be seem impossible to do some things, but my new friend, her name is Mrs. Moore. And you, some of you local um, kids might have known her. Um, she's a teacher at Park Elementary School and she helps out with um, Mount Bethel Cemetery. That's how I got to, to uh, meet her when we helped, went over to try to help with the cemetery that day. And she has stopped by to see me at the church office a time or two and she brings me stuff. I love it. And she, because she works with children and she knows I love working with children, she brought me this um, paper snowflake um, instructions. If any of you have ever had Mrs. Moore in your class, you know what I'm talking about. Well, this has instructions. Look, lots of instructions. And I opened this paper up and I was like, oh, I'm gonna make some snowflakes. Well, I showed this to my husband and we both looked at this and thought, oh, this is impossible. How can we make these snowflakes? It's folding this way, folding that way, cutting, cutting, cutting. Well, it's not as hard as you think. You just have to believe in yourself 
and know that the impossible can be possible. And if you read the directions closely, if you follow the directions and you cut the little black areas out like you're supposed to and you fold on the dotted lines, you can make amazing snowflakes. Now I am willing to share these patterns from Mrs. Moore Snowflakes with you. You just need to let me know and I will shoot them off to you in an email or I will actually pop them in the mail if you don't have a printer to print them from your email. You just need to let me know. Type below and let me know that you want. I gotta show you this beautiful snowflake that came from her patterns. It might seem impossible, but it's very possible to make these snowflakes. It took some patience, it took belief, but it works. And it is absolutely a beautiful snowflake and there's so many different patterns. I'm gonna sit today and cut some more and I do believe I am going to use that as one of my, I'm gonna make a game out of it for my family, for my children when they come over Christmas Eve. So if they watch this, they're getting a little heads up on what we're gonna do. So I think we spoke about a lot of things today. Um, Mary was such an amazing woman. Her life was changed forever in that one moment when the angel came and talked to her. Mary very easily said yes. She said yes. And her plans in her whole life changed in an instant. We might not like when plans change in our own lives. I don't always like when plans change. But if you have belief, it's not so bad. So let us, before we pray out today, I didn't make too many announcements for you this morning, um, but I do want to let you know um, we have our worship service. It's going to be live on Facebook, on St. John's Facebook page at uh, 1015. Pastor Weitzel is going to be doing it from his home. I'm going to put two videos up of music that our music director, Michelle Lopez, played with Jan Stein. It's called Four Hand Piano. We only have two hands, so it takes two people to play four hands. It is awesome music. So you want to check that out. All this stuff will be uploaded onto our YouTube channel. So um, if you don't have Facebook, that means you're not watching me right now, but we'll put it up on face on uh, YouTube today and you can watch them all. Christmas Eve, here comes Ginger. Come here, Ginger. Nope, she's not coming. On Christmas Eve at 7 p.m., there will be a live Christmas Eve service on Facebook. Pastor Weitzel is going to make it a beautiful service with his family from his home. I'm looking forward to that. And then Christmas morning, he's also going to be doing a live service at um, 1015. Um, so we are in for, there's Jen, here's my girl, ears. And um, I hope that everybody has a wonderful day. Oh, I forgot to mention, I will be here also on Christmas Eve at 9 a.m. doing a little faith formation for you kids at 9 o'clock on Christmas Eve morning. I hope you can join me. And I will have my coffee. Maybe you should have a cup of cocoa. And we will see each other soon. Have a great day. See you, everyone. Bye-bye.